In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make marshmallow fondant. This is not a fondant that you're going to use for 3D objects or items on a cake that you want to dry and to hold shape. It will not dry hard enough for that, but it is perfect for covering your cake in or making a symbol border out of or any pieces that are going to be laying flat against the cake and pressed against the cake. It's all good for those and it tastes much better than a store-bought pre-made fondant. So there are all kinds of recipes you can find for this. I choose the easiest one. Um, I just get a bag of mini marshmallows and this is just the off brand, the cheap brand. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is about 10 ounce bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to melt this in a microwave safe bowl. And this is a pretty good sized bowl because I'm gonna add a lot of powdered sugar to it while it's still in the bowl. So I wanna make sure I have lots of space for that. But before you do that, take off any rings you have on because it'll be all over you. You could wear food safe gloves during this. I choose not to. I feel like the marshmallows, no matter how much shortening I put on my hands, if I have on gloves, it just strings and sticks. So I'm going to coat this entire inside of the bowl in vegetable shortening. Again, cheap stuff is fine. This is not really a main ingredient. This is just to keep it from sticking to your hands. So you're gonna all around the bottom, all around the sides, almost like you were making bread dough if you were like covering your bowl in olive oil or butter for bread, same idea. You don't want it to stick to anything. And then I'm just going to pour in my new marshmallows. So, just dump them right in. I have used the larger marshmallows before, the standard size um, or even the jumbo size. However, it just takes longer to melt. So, I just found this to be a little bit easier to just dump the entire package in. I just break it up a little bit if it's clumped together like mine are. And then you're just gonna add a splash of water. Now I have in here about a half a cup of water measured out. I probably will not use all this. I just put in a splash. And then I'm gonna put this in the microwave for about 45 seconds, just on regular like medium heat. Uh, and then I'm going to get a rubber spatula, stir it, and do it another round until they're melted. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And it's pretty good and melted. I just stirred in that little bit of water and it's sticking a little bit to the sides, but nothing too crazy. So at this point, I'm gonna add a little bit of clear vanilla extract. You can use regular vanilla. However, I don't want it to color my fondant at all. So I recommend clear. And I would do about a teaspoon. Again, I'm bad about measuring, so I'm just gonna do a splash. You could also, if you wanted to flavor your fondant, you could use a lemon extract or something along those lines. I tend to go with vanilla. That way, if I have extra, um, I can use it on a different cake order and not have to worry about it being a certain flavor. Marshmallow fondant won't last as long as pre-made or even if you make your own fondant at home, it won't last as long as that. So. What I normally do is I make it one day and then I will wrap it in plastic wrap and let it kind of rest overnight before I use it. When I do that, I leave it out on the counter at room temperature overnight, wrapped in plastic wrap until I'm ready to use it so it's nice and soft the next day. However, when I am done with whatever cake or project I'm using this on, I will again, wrap it in plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator to extend the shelf life. So that I wanted it to last 10 days, 14 days, it will last longer in the refrigerator. Um, I normally only make what I need. So if I do have any leftover, it's very minimal. Um, but you just kind of can do what you can do. It just is not going to last as long. And what you'll notice is if you try to use it and it's a little old, it doesn't have any elasticity. So it will break apart. It might still taste good, but it really won't be usable to cover a cake in. So once I've got my vanilla extract stirred in, I'm gonna start adding my powdered sugar. Now, you definitely are gonna need at least, I would say, four cups of powdered sugar. But again, depending on where you live, this may be different. So don't stress about the measuring. I add a cup at a time until it's the consistency that I want it to be. Depending on the time of year, where you live, your humidity level, all that's gonna make a difference. So, I'm gonna get one cup, toss that in. And at this point, since the marshmallows are still pretty soft, pretty liquefied, you can just stir it with your rubber spatula. And you can actually cover your entire spatula in Crisco, which I'll probably do shortly. 
um, to keep it from sticking to that. But you're just going to stir that in. You can kind of see me. I'm just kind of folding it. You're not going to do a fast stir. You don't want to add any air to this. You don't want to have bubbles and, and all of that when you go to roll this out. So I'm just kind of folding it onto itself. And you'll see that it, it absorbs pretty quickly. It's not too bad. So I'm going to keep stirring. Okay, so that is decently incorporated. So before I touch it with my hands, I'm going to cover my hands in shorting. A lot of shorting. So it's going to feel gross, but it's worth it. And actually it's pretty good for your skin. So let's see here, we're going to do that. And I'm going to push this out of the way. This is actually, I guess you would call it a cutting mat, a craft mat. I got it at our local craft store. It's not for cake. I think it was actually with the scrapbooking, scrapbooking section, but I love it. Um, it. It doesn't really get damaged at all. And so I use my X-Acto knife on it. I use all of my um, cutting tools, whether it's scissors or fondant cutters on it when I do fondant. So this is pretty much my fondant mat and I like it because I can clean it, I can bleach it, I can do whatever I need to do to reuse it again the next day. So I am actually at this point, instead of adding the powdered sugar back in, I think I'm going to go ahead and roll it out onto the table so that you can see what I'm doing. If you were doing this at home, I would suggest maybe adding the second cup of powdered sugar into the bowl and kneading it in the bowl just to kind of leave you a little bit of a mess so powdered sugar isn't everywhere. But since I want you all to see it, we're just going to do it here and make a big mess. So you're going to scrape that just directly onto your mat. If you don't have a mat, it's no big deal. You can just directly onto your countertop. But what I would suggest is really coating your countertop with powdered sugar. You can even put parchment paper down on your countertop and then put your powdered sugar on top and then put some shortening under the parchment against the countertop to make it kind of stay in place if you want to protect your counters a little bit more. So I poured out my marshmallow onto that cup of powdered sugar that I had poured on the countertop. And then I got another cup of powdered sugar and poured it on top. So this is going to take me a little time, but I'm going to continue to knead this in. It looks like it won't go all the way, but it will. It will absorb it. Now, if you felt like this was too much, if you, you know, had either had a smaller bag of marshmallows or just lost count of how much powdered sugar you had and you felt like it was a little dry, you add in water. Now, you don't want to just pour water on top. I would just like get your fingertips a little wet and then touch it to your fondant, like that small amount of water. Maybe do that a few different times if you feel like you need to, to add moisture back into your fondant. Well, what I generally do is continue to work this in, and this will be three full cups of powdered sugar. Like I said, I'll probably need four, but maybe not. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, so I'm just needing this in. It feels really good right now, but it's still a little thin. Like there's no way that you would be able to roll this out. And that's why you have to continue to add that powdered sugar in, because that's what gives it the firmness that you need to withstand being rolled out and laid on top of the cake and used for decorations. So I'm gonna keep kneading this. And again, right for your skin. And every once in a while, so probably two to three times throughout this process, I like to add a little bit of um, shortening, just like a teaspoon maybe at a time, and knead that in as well to give it more elasticity. So I've got a little bit on my hand here, I'm gonna rub it on my hands and knead that in. That's gonna help it not stick, but also it's good for the fondant. Now, a lot of times, and I will actually do this with this marshmallow fondant tomorrow when I go to use it, I will actually take some pre-made fondant and I actually prefer the satin ice fondant. I use this in my favorite brand. So I will actually take Probably, if I had to measure it, I would say it's probably about a cup. You don't have to measure it, but I like to have about two thirds marshmallow and a third of the pre-made fondant. And I'll knead these together before I roll it out onto the cake. This will just give it a little bit more stability and a little bit more elasticity and will just make for a better looking fondant, but it'll still have that nice, yummy flavor of marshmallow and it will also not dry quite so hard and it'll remain a little softer due to the marshmallow. So that Crisco that 
that I added is completely absorbed now. So I've almost got all my powdered sugar in. And you'll see, even on these mats, I mean, there's just stuff sticking all over it. That's why it's best to put a ton of powdered sugar down. So I've got those three cups in. It feels pretty good. It's not really, it's not pulling back. You know, it's not sticking, but it is still sticking to my, to my mat here. So I'm going to do another cup. So this will be four cups. I'm actually going to move my bowl out of the way. All right. So I don't know if you can see or not, but it is holding like fingerprints in. It's still a little soft. So I'm going to keep kneading this in. And this is actually going on eight inch round cake. So by the time I add some of the satin ice fondant to this, it should be exactly what I need to cover that eight inch cake. I'm not coloring this. I want it to stay like an off white color. If you were going to color it, I would have actually suggested coloring it during the melting process. So once I pulled it out of the microwave the second time and it was completely melted, I would have added food coloring at that moment. Because I don't know about you, but if you work with fondant a lot and you're kneading it all the time, it really can it tire out your wrist and your hands. Um, I've got horrible pain in my wrist and fingers. Um, from doing so much cakes, uh, whether it's buttercream or fondant, you know, you're always using your wrist and hands. So if you're going to add any color, do it while the marshmallows are soft before you add the powdered sugar and just save your wrist a little bit. And it may, the color may lighten up when you do that by, you know, when you start to add that powdered sugar, but not so much that you can't add a drop or two if you need it to at the end. So maybe even start with a little bit more food color than you would think you might need. Um, and then as it lightens up, it might get to the, to the what you need. So, um, so yes, if you were covering an entire cake in one color of fondant, that's what I would suggest. I've done that before. If it was like a tiered cake, I needed a good amount of marshmallow fondant, all the same color. I would color it during the melting process. Unfortunately, if you're using it for cutouts, you may need several different colors. And in that case, obviously, you're going to want to make all your fondant, section it off, and color each section separately. But luckily, I don't have to do that on this cake. So like I said, once I get all this kneaded in, I'm going to let it rest overnight. But before I do that, before I wrap it in plastic and let it sit on the countertop, I'm actually, once I get all this in here, I'm going to get more of the shortening and just cover the outside of that marshmallow fondant. It'll absorb that fondant or that, that shortening as it sits and rests overnight and really keep the softness there um, because that plastic wrap is going to be right on top of the shortening, really sealing in that moisture. That's really what you want. And I am not a big fondant fan as far as eating it. I love buttercream. And so I don't normally cover cakes in fondant unless they just really need to be. So for instance, this particular cake is going to be outdoors for a long period of time. And it's pretty hot here in Kentucky. So the customer was asking me what they could do. And I suggested maybe covering it in fondant. Now, fondant can still get tacky. It can still get soft but it's not going to melt completely unless they let it sit out for like eight hours. So it is going to be later in the day when they're outdoors with this. So I thought maybe the fondant would hold up a little better. So that is why I'm using it. But if I don't have to, if I can cover a cake and buttercream, I do. Um, and then I will go back with fondant to make any accents that may need to be made that I can't do a buttercream or that I don't like as well in buttercream. For instance, I have a two-tiered cake this weekend that is a jungle theme. And so I'm covering the entire thing in buttercream and icing it and coloring it in all these different colors. But then I have to make a few different animals, like safari-style animals to go on. And those will obviously be made out of a fondant gum paste mixture. But then I'll just attach them to the cake once I have it iced and stacked. And that's generally what I like to do. And customers, I think, appreciate that because they don't want to cut through all that fondant if they don't have to. Most people don't eat it anyway. Um, but some people do. I actually have a few customers that actually like the marshmallow fondant and so they've actually asked for it on their cakes which that's totally fun. I can do that. So as you can see this fourth cup is taking a little longer to knead in. It's not absorbing as quickly as it was. And that's to be expected at this point. I think I'm going to do a little bit more of the shortening. Okay. 
And if you don't think you're going to need all this, don't feel like you have to put this in here. So for instance, this, it's still sticking, you can see that on the, on the table. For instance, when I hold this, that's too soft. It should not drip like that. Because if you think about it, if you buy fondant, like pre-made satin eyes or Wilton brand, any other brand, it's not going to droop like that. So that is how I know it's not ready. So even though it looks good, you're like, oh, I bet it tastes good at this point, it's not going to hold up well, especially in the heat. So I'm going to keep adding this. And like I said, if I feel like it's soft, it needs the powdered sugar, but it feels dry, I'll always add a little touch of water if I can. And feel free to leave any comments and let me know what questions you have. Um, I think I mentioned before, but generic brands, as far as the marshmallows, the shortening, the powdered sugar, that's all totally fine. I don't always say that, it depends on what you're making, but for the marshmallow fondant, I have found that it does not make a difference. So please feel free to save some money. And as far as the clear vanilla extract, that may be you don't want to go too super cheap. Um, there's several really good brands out there. I'm actually using the McCormick brand, ordered it off Amazon, and that actually does really well. I also use this in my classic white cake because I don't want it to be colored. I want kind of a nice bright look, the actual cake itself. So I use that instead of um, pure vanilla extract in my white cakes as well. Oh, and I also use it in my royal icing. Royal icing, sometimes I really want that bright white color. And so I use that and then I can color it separately. If I want it to be ivory, I can always add a little bit of color to make it ivory. But I do like a, a bright white on my royal icing. And just keep kneading. It's a good arm workout. More Crisco. Now I am going to add a little bit of water. So I'm barely going to touch my fingers. I'm just kind of fling it over there. And keep adding that powdered sugar. I think this four cups will do it. I don't think I'm going to need any more. More shortening. I can feel it getting a little tougher. I'm having to push down a little harder, which means it's about done. It's not quite so easy to knead and to fold. Okay, I think I'm there. It's nice and pliable. It's not sticking to my fingers. Let's do the drip test here and see how long it takes it to fall a little bit. I think we're good. It's slowly moving, but not by much. So I'm going to leave it because I am going to be adding a little bit of that side nice and it tomorrow. I think this is going to be sturdy enough. So at this point, like I said, and I still, I'm just going to put it into plastic wrap, but as I, as you can see, there's probably, maybe a third of a cup, half a cup of powdered sugar that did not get added into this, and that's okay. I think it feels fine. So don't stress over the measurements, because it really will make a difference. Sometimes even the brand, like the brand of marshmallows will make a difference. So I'm gonna put another good amount of shortening on my hands, and I'm just gonna cover it. You're not really gonna need it, you just wanna coat it. Feels kind of gross, kind of greasy. So this is what you're looking for. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it really tight in plastic wrap and I'm going to stick it on the counter. And then tomorrow I'm going to roll it out and add this at nice, before I roll it out actually, and put it on the cake and it should be nice and elastic. And you, if you are afraid of using fondant or making your own fondant. This is a great recipe if you've never done it. Everybody likes the taste of it. It's easy to work with. 
it's fairly inexpensive to make. And I just add a little bit of my satin ice fondant and it's perfect for cakes. So try it out. Let me know what you think. Please feel free to comment with any questions or concerns that you have. I'll be glad to answer those questions for you. And good luck. Thanks for watching.